guess what I've got? It's the GoPro Fusion, it's finally here. They've taken their sweet ass time, haven't they? But it's here and spoiler alert, it's epic. So in this video, I've got my buddy Kevin and we're going to go through everything we know about the Fusion so far after using it for a short time. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly what is and isn't awesome about the GoPro Fusion. This is Ben from Life in 360. And this is Kevin from youtube.com slash Kevin Coons. And look what we have, it's the GoPro Fusion. We've all been talking about it. Everybody's been waiting for a long, long time and it's finally here. Kevin has had the good fortune of playing with it for a decent amount of time now and he has a really good understanding of it. So I thought there would be no better person to come along and talk to us about the Fusion than Kevin because he can give us some really good insights about what we can expect from the Fusion, what its strengths are and what its weaknesses are. From what I've seen so far, I've got to say I've been absolutely blown away by it. It's rare that I use the word game changer when it comes to 360 cameras, but for me, for video, this I'm not going to say game changer, but it changes the landscape significantly because the footage is so sharp, right? It's actually similar to what you'd see from a normal video. Mm -hmm. I think it actually looks like the sharpest footage I've seen out of a 360 camera that's not shot with DSLRs. To be honest, I didn't expect a lot from GoPro going into this. The Omni system I was kind of disappointed in being someone who's shot with seven GoPros and then they wanted it to squish down to six. And it was just not an all-in-one system. Here we are 12 months later and they're releasing this amazing all-in-one 360 camera that looks like it does better than the Omni in terms yeah. of the quality and just the stitching is unbelievable. Yeah, and you know what? I previewed the Odyssey the other day, which is 16 GoPros on one rig. This footage looks better. Mm -hmm which is incredible because this is only a 5.2K camera, right? So technically it should be far inferior to these much more expensive rigs. Holy shit, that looks so good. Look at that sharpness. Oh my God. That is like the sharpest 360 camera I've ever seen. I've seen Insta360 Pro footage. I've seen Zed Cam footage. This is sharper. Like I've seen 8K that doesn't look this sharp. Holy crap. I can literally see gray hairs in your face. Shut up. <laughs> Asshole. Because this was shot in 5.2K, um, yet it looks sharper than, than 8K. So I wonder what they're doing to get that extra sharpness, um, despite having a resolution similar to like the Garmin Verb or the Yi. You're not going to get this sharpness with their 5.7K. I would even propose that this is sharper than the Z-Cam. Yeah. And I think it has a lot to do with the lenses. Mm -hmm. These GoPro lenses are actually very tiny lenses, mm. but what's great about them is you're not getting any of that sun flare. So mm. you could use these sort of lenses to get those details out there. Yes. Versus if you have this fisheye lens, yeah. it, you can't get that great of focal length. That's a really good point because often the sun can distort the entire image. Yes, the sun is in a little corner, right? But the, the flare actually creates like a mist over an entire portion of the video. And look at that sharpness, even around those trees, they're still pin sharp. Like that is incredible. That, this is almost like what I'm seeing from my eyes. I can't believe I'm saying that, but a 360 camera is producing something that is similar to what I'm seeing with my eyes. Right, let's go shoot with this bad boy. I'm so excited, Ben. Yeah. Um, this is like the camera that the market has been waiting for. Yeah. And that like just regular non-360 people have been waiting for, I feel. And it's been hyped for a super long time as well. So I think the hype kind of grows. With, with certain cameras, the hype grows and then it fades. So like the Kodak Pix Pro, or the new one, for example, it was hyped and then the hype faded and then no one gave, it, gave a shit by the time it finally came out. For me, it feels like the hype is still there with the Fusion. What a lot of these tech companies will do is they'll do one that's like a pro version and one that's more of the pro consumer version. And that's very much what Kodak was doing with the Orbit because the Kodak 4K was so good. Um, and then they tried to like, you know, put it all in one, but make it easier for people to use. But they took away those tech things like the 30 frames and these other factors that a lot of uh, 360 filmmakers like. But I'll say this, one thing that's great about the GoPro Fusion is that it's now gonna raise the bar for all these other cameras. Yeah. Like the version that they're gonna put out next year for 2018, probably the Kodaks, is gonna have 6K res. That's at least my prediction. They need yeah. to up the, 
up the bar and make it so I want to buy that. Yeah, exactly. And when you do have a camera like the GoPro or even the One or the, the Theta that does kind of create this new thing that is like the shit, it's like the must have, um, all the others, all the other camera companies act instantly to try and match them, if not better them. Based on the footage I've seen so far, this is one of the biggest standard raises that I've seen from a 360 camera. I think anyone can pick up this camera, turn it on, and start recording beautiful 360 video with it. And that's a big factor, uh, considering that many of the 360 cameras on the market right now are kind of confusing. So tell me, what do you think about the design from using it so far? Is it a well-designed camera? I think it's like what Yao Mi, you know, like the Yao Mi design, is the perfect design for 360 um, because of kind of what you pointed out in your YouTube video. If this thing hits sun glare, you almost have this extra spacing up there to kind of prevent that. Yeah. Whereas most 360 cameras like the Garmin's or the Kodak's, it's just full exposure for well, those fisheye yes, lenses. Yes, that round fisheye fish lenses and it really just attracts the sun and creates those red flares and waves all over the image. So whenever I see a camera with flat lenses that can still capture a 180 degree field of view, you know it's going to handle the sun a lot better. Definitely. Um, I would say another nice feature of it is that you don't really need to connect your cell phone into it to be able to, you know, operate everything on there and change uh, specific details. One of the downsides, I think, to a lot of 360 cameras right now is you need to plug it into your phone or go on Wi-Fi in order to use all the full utilities in there. For instance, the Garmin Verb, which I think is probably the closest comparison with this right now in terms yes. of price range. That's a great camera to get 5.7K res but I have to have my cell phone connected to it the whole time. Mm. And so that's not really realistic for if I want to get that res on a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. Motorcyclist has to have their phone open too somewhere. And, yeah. But meanwhile, I could put this on there mm -hmm. and I think get better quality footage. Mm -hmm. Even though the resolution isn't as high, I think the sharpness, mm -hmm. the dynamic range, all those other things make it a better camera. Yeah, no, totally agreed. With the design, one thing I do like is that little screen there where we can see all of our features. So we can change modes, we can change resolutions. It's just really handy to have to be able to see your settings as you change them and not have to connect to your phone, like Kevin said. I've also noticed there's quite a few panels um, on the top and the, the sides and the bottom that it seems to accommodate a lot of things. Have you found that the design in terms of the, the compartments has been kind of well arranged? Um, I think the design in terms of the compartments is definitely well arranged yeah. and just the overall ease of use, like just being able to turn it off, you just power it down like that on the side. And then if you want to switch out another battery, you can just, you can just open the compartment there, pull the battery out, and then yeah. swap it out. And guys, check out this battery. Look how big that is. That is double the size of an average 360 camera battery or even a GoPro battery. So more battery is always a good thing, especially when you're shooting at those really high resolutions. You don't want it to run out after 20 minutes. What has your experience been like with, with the battery life of the GoPro Fusion? The battery life has been great. I mean, as you can see, the battery is almost half of the design of the camera. Like if you can actually look on the inside there, you'll see it's pretty much hollowed all the way out on the inside. And so the camera function is actually only this top part there. You can almost see like the hexagon of it. So it's mainly battery, which is really good because uh, you need probably a lot of battery life to be running this type of resolution and sending it to both cards. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you'll notice he said both cards. With the GoPro Fusion, you're using two micro SD cards instead of one. One is for each side of the camera. So therefore, it's able to write all of the data to the camera without overwhelming the camera. It's going to mean it's less likely to overheat and it's going to produce less errors and corrupt footage. Overall, like having it sent to two cards is really smart because that image quality doesn't get compressed down or crunched down. It has enough speed to be able to send to both. And in comparison, you look at some of these other cameras like the E camera, and they're opening their you know, amount that they're sending to the card, but it's like, I'd rather have two freeways than one freeway that goes 120. Yes. I'd rather have two going 60. If it, that's sort of my analogy. Yeah, have you found it to get hot? at all when shooting for a long time? Not really, you can see we just did like a 15 minute take there and you could feel it because yeah. of the rubber body, yeah. it actually doesn't heat up. Yeah. Um, Cool. Yeah, I think they went with the gray instead of straight black as well to, for heat dispersion. And what's great is that any GoPro attachment that you own, 
you can still use that basic thread in there. It's very much made for uh, you know people who have never picked up a 360 camera before. Mm. Man, if this was my first 360 camera, I would be like a kid on Christmas. It's so easy to operate, right? You, you can just press record and you have a better 360 video than the GoPro Omni, which required like days of setup and production, post-production from beginning to end. To be able to get such an amazing end result at such a low price point and with such ease, mm -hmm. that actually does open it up to consumers, like you said, whereas to me, like to get such amazing video quality, I'd be like, no, surely a consumer can't get that. Yeah. And to be honest, I thought this camera was gonna cost $1,000 when it was set to come out. And I, I still think it could be priced at that point because you're getting that much great yeah. tech inside of there. For it. This is gonna become my daily vlogging camera from here on out because it's so fast, the quality is so good, and you're able to stitch it like pretty dang quick. Mm -hmm. The one thing I would say is a caveat is the stitching software could get a little bit better. It's not quite color stitching software, it's not quite Mystica stitching software, but it's pretty good for free stitching software. I would say it is the best free stitching software on the market right now for like an in-camera purchase. So next I wanna talk about resolution and we have lots of different modes for both photo and video. So what do we have, Kevin? You can see you got 5.2K res at 30. If you go down, you can change that to 3K at 60 frames. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do a slow-mo shot, you can do a slow-mo shot and it comes out pretty dang good. Um, if you continue onward, you have ProTune. You can turn that off and not have to worry about color correction. I always turn this on when I'm using it. And you got a couple different ISO options. You have ISO 400, ISO 6400, and ISO 1600. I personally like the 400 ISO. I feel like it comes out pretty good. Yep. But as it gets darker at night, you might want to change that. You also have the manual exposure, which I don't even touch because you don't need to. Um, now, as we go into photo mode, you see here you have a night photo mode option. You also, in order to switch up the mode, you go to that one, by the way, the little wrench tool. And you can go in there and actually change the different things. So within photo mode here, you see going to the wrench tool and then going one over and then clicking down, you have night mode and you have photo mode and you have burst mode. These are three different modes that you can shoot with it. With photo mode, you have the option of uh, ProTune and you have a lot more ISO options. You have 800 and 400 and 200 and 100. So I'm guessing ProTune is like shooting raw for photos. Is that right? Like, have you played much with the photos? Exa I haven't played at all really with the photos, to be honest, Ben. And that's why I was kind of excited mm -hmm. to go out today and yeah. see what type of photos we can get together with this. Yes, let's shoot some samples. Um, and it is definitely, you can see with the memory card, you could shoot lots and lots of photos with this. Now, if we go over to our very last mode here, you have time-lapse mode. And you see there's also the raw option in photos. This is really good news because raw photos is a massive add-on to any 360 camera. It's only very recently that raw was introduced to the Insta360 One. So to have it in the GoPro means that they're branding this camera for photographers and photography as well as video. That is awesome news because personally, I find myself probably more of a photographer than a video. But to me, that says this could be a camera that meets all of my needs, mm -hmm. potentially. More Definitely. testing to be done. Definitely, and within time-lapse mode, I'm very impressed with the results I've gotten. So you see here, you have your time-lapse mode, and you can also do time-lapse video, which can actually do 5.2K at 30 as a time-lapse video, but you can shoot it for much longer. You have different exposure times, five seconds, 10 seconds, etc. All right, so time-lapse mode, you see you can also set it to 3K, 30, or 5.2K. Here's how many different uh, seconds you can set it to. So you can do it at one second, every two seconds, every five seconds, yeah, nice. 10 seconds, 30, 60, and 0.5. And so, yeah, you get a lot of different options there with that. And you can also do it as photos if you don't want to do video time-lapse. So it's giving you really two different time-lapse options, which yeah. is super helpful for someone who shoots time-lapses like every single day. Yeah. I know a lot of people will really appreciate that, like just having that flexibility of having one shorter video clip or having thousands of photos. Totally. So one thing that you notice is that you can actually charge the battery for it and still continue to shoot. Like for instance, if we took Velcro 
and just wrap that around here. I don't really think this would appear too much in the stitch line. Yeah. Um, it would be a little bit better if they did it lower or underneath, but mm. it's not too big of a factor. Yeah, so you can roll video on this and charge it simultaneously. That is something that's really awesome, especially for you guys out there that like recording for six hours straight and your camera runs out of battery after 30 minutes. You can charge this and record simultaneously. I really love this camera because it has two different lenses that are sort of slightly um, off. Yeah. yeah, and that offset actually helps it with the stitching rather than having them be identical next to each other. I think it also helps with the heat dispersion and a lot of other things inside the camera. Yeah, it's interesting because the Insta 361 is the same, right? However, the stitching is shit house. Yeah. Like it's so bad, but you know what? I think it's because it's actually a thicker camera. Um, and even with stitching optimization, I found um, I could never really get a good stitch, especially with anything within about like three or four feet. Yeah. So my guess is the Fusion is going to be a better stitch than, than the one. Definitely, definitely. I think the idea is right by having them, you know, not exactly centered, but being offset. But the GoPro Fusion has that extra resolution where you're going to be able to get those pixels to get a little bit closer in that seam line. So we'll get to see what this really looks like in stitching when I put it through Mystica. Because while I like the Fusion software, I think it's really good. It's not quite as good as Mystica or Color. Next, I want to talk about stabilization. And one of my favorite features of any 360 camera is the ability to have six axis stabilization. Luckily, the GoPro Fusion does have six axis. So what's your experience been like with stabilization on the Fusion? I think that the stabilization in this has been truly amazing. Um, you know, I've compared it with the Garmin, which has more built-in sensors for that, and I'd say they're pretty much at par. Um, maybe even the GoPro might be better because it's like a little bit smaller and the stitch line is closer together. So it does not have a follow mode for stabilization like the Garmin Verb, but that being said, you can use the stabilization in the software to be able to control it, and that helps out major. So, I, I, you know, it might drift a little bit and you might have to fix those things in post, but that's understandable considering how well the stabilization is. And you gotta think that uh, GoPro is piggybacking off of Color, their $1,000 stitching software. Yeah. So you're really getting $1,000 stabilization software plugged directly into your camera. Got the GoPro Fusion here. We're about to take our first ever Tiny Planet photo using the GoPro Fusion. I'm a big Tiny Planet photographer and I need a camera that's going to take damn good photos that I can then turn into Tiny Planet. So, is it going to do the job? Let's do it, Kevin. Three, two, one, woo! So ultimately, who do you think this camera is targeted at? Is it targeted at beginners, intermediate, advanced? Who's the crowd? Who are they trying to sell this to? Honestly, this camera I think can apply to anyone. If you've never had a 360 camera before, this is a great intro camera. You'll get amazing quality, you'll have stitching software that will make it very easy, and it's reliable, which is a major, major factor that drew me and attracted me to it. Mm. On the other hand, the Omni was completely unreliable with what you'd get out of it. So I would say that that's great for beginners. And then on the other hand, it's great for people who are advanced like me and want to do things like shoot for hours on end time lapses and be able to attach them to drones. Yeah. Which by the way, I brought this drone here. Would you want to, would you want to go fly it on this? I didn't that. Yeah, let's go, why let's go. do it? Just screw it on there. Like that. And then ideally you'd want to put one of these on the top yeah. and then you can stitch out the drone. But I only have one Fusion. Oh, right now. Kevin, I'm a seasoned pro. I've done this once before, so just just trust me on this one. This is why We're I worry a little bit, because I've done this so many times and heard 
so many horror stories about people who have had to go to the emergency room from getting their fingers caught. Yeah, but at least we'll have it on camera and make good content. Exactly, as long as we have a slow-mo shot when it takes yeah, exactly. off. Exactly. All right, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna hit the button. Yeah. It's gonna take off. All right. Hey, you wanna land? Should we do the catch? Yeah. You ready to catch it? Yep. You got this recording? Slow-mo, you got it? And I'm just gonna hit the down button and then hold it. There's a Facebook group I'd highly recommend you guys join and it's to do with the GoPro Fusion. If you've bought one or if you have any questions about it, there's heaps of GoPro Fusion users there. So you want to join it, ask questions and really get a feel for the Fusion. You can see sample photos, sample videos. You get a lot of value from it and it's completely free. I'll put a link to it down in the description. So I will put out videos in the future where I put together some further thoughts and that we try it out in many more different situations. But I want to get you guys just a first impressions video because my first impression of the Fusion is it's incredible and to me I can see it's going to change the way I shoot because this is producing something that I would actually be happy giving to a client and like using super professionally and now I can use this in my vlogs my YouTube videos my social media content even so it's going to mean I have next level professional content at an affordable price so to me that's really incredible so definitely stay tuned um, for more GoPro Fusion footage. I'll release a few more experiments. We'll do some more collaboration videos and definitely subscribe if you haven't already. You, my YouTube channel is youtube.com slash life in 360 photo. What's yours? It is youtube.com slash Kevin Coons. Can I spell that and, for them? Yeah, Kevin Coons, K-E-V-I-N. K-U-N-Z as in zebra E. You'll definitely want to check out Kevin's channel because if you think I'm a 360 geek, this guy, he he puts me to shame. Like he posts so many 360 videos. He has every camera known to man and he's just hustling hardcore to get content out there, to get vlogs out. He's got thousands of videos, so definitely check him out because I think you get a lot of value from his channel. I'll put a link down in the description to where you can find the GoPro Fusion on Amazon for the cheapest price possible, so definitely check that out. And until next time, keep capturing your world in 360. This has been Ben and Kevin. We will see you in the next video.